Hey, to here, it's Jason Brown with Spectrum News One. You you talked about Josh Jacobs being a downhill runner, running angry. He was everything and then some today. He sort of why you guys I know did the best you could, but but what in the end was what was the difference with him as far as how effective he could be? Honestly, I think it was uh more of us not, you know, doing our job today. Uh you know, after we went to the sideline, we see what was going on. It was a matter of missed tackles, you know, just not taking the extra step. Um, and, you know, no no credit taken away from Josh. But I think, you know, when it all boiled down, it was more so us not executing, you know, the tackling technique well enough, which, you know, you can make the excuse like, oh, it's first game, this and that. You know, that's not good enough. But uh, that's what we ended up figuring was the case. To hear Mike Solarte with Spectrum News One, is this as weird of an opener that you could go through playing your old team, being the starter on the new team, no fans due to COVID? I mean, it just seems like if you could drop just the weirdest scenario, this might just be it. Uh, no, not weird. Just, you know, it's, it's ball, you know, just on a different team and, you know, playing against, a, you know, an opponent. So I don't see it no different. You know, it would definitely would have been uh, great to get the win out there. You know, obviously just, you know, it's the season opener. You always want to open up, open up in a, on a good note. But, um, you know, it's, uh, we left some good stuff out there. We put some bad stuff out there. Just a matter of going, you know, watching the film, making the corrections and, uh, moving on to next week. Um, but I think we have, you know, a lot of talented guys, a lot of hardworking guys, you know, hungry guys on this team. And um, the, the corrections that need to be made, I think we'll get them fixed and we'll start to, you know, continue, you know, play some really good ball uh, throughout the duration of the season. Tiger, what made the Raiders tough to stop on third down? Uh, you know, it was just, I think it was more so, like I said earlier, you know, it goes back to us uh, just communicating, us being where we need to be and executing our job. Um, and you'll see, you know, throughout, you know, play by play basis on um, a week to week basis, it's a matter of who makes the least amount of mistakes is who ends up uh, winning a down and winning the game. Did you find that that was sort of the issue on that last drive in the fourth quarter where they were able to drive down the field? It was just an execution issue on you guys' part? Uh, no, you know, uh, they were able to make uh, make some plays and just made a few more than we did. And that was really the, the end of it. You know, we just have to execute out on our end and uh, not really give up, you know, the simple stuff. Hey, to hear, is there any one area in particular that you took away from today and say that's really one area we need to improve on? Um, honestly, I say just uh, tackling and just uh, communication. And, you know, throughout my years of playing, I've always found that that's uh, generally the case on defense. You know, if you have a defense that's uh, overly communicating and we're all, uh, all on the same page and, you know, not in more times than not, we were today and, you know, it, Whenever we didn't over communicate, you know, that's when things got a little shaky. So if we continue to get, you know, better at the simple things and handle our business and do execute our jobs, you know, you have 11 guys executing, you know, they're 111th. We're going to continue to play some good football, you know, because even though we took the L today, you know, it was a lot of good football played on our end. You know, we proved ourselves, you know, in most uh, cases that we can go out there and we can play and that we have the grit to go out there and continue to grind all the way into the fourth quarter. So uh, we just needed one more stop in this game and we weren't able to get it. Here, what was your view on the two PI calls? Uh, you know, that second one on uh, Renfro. Well, shit, both of them was on run from then I think about it. Um, the second one, uh, you know, just misjudged it, you know, so it couldn't see his upfield arm. His inside arm went up. I assumed he was going for the ball, and I just played through his arms a little too early. And then the second one, I think it was just, you know, whatever they called it, the way they saw it. Um, it was under five yards. He ran the option route, played inside, you know, came around him, and, you know, they, they called that one, said I hooked him, so. You know, at the end of the day, you know, I can't really harp on that. Just got to keep working my technique. Um, you know, just take the extra step, just like in the tackling during, throughout today's game. You know, take the extra step, trust it, and just play ball. How did losing Dante Jackson affect uh, the defense, and what did you think of Rasul just coming in after only being here for a few days? 
Um, you know, obviously Dante is a huge playmaker for us, and you know, Russell uh, stepped up, you know, and took advantage of the opportunity. You know, he went out there, he played great ball, but um, I think at the end of the day, you know, we were all able to settle each other down for the most part, uh, get things, um, you know, communicated clearly more times than not, and um, he felt confident in going out there and executing his his job, and you know he knew his job, and he went out there and did exactly that. You know he played ball and he was prepared. You know he's a pro; he's been around for quite some time. So I expected nothing less than that. Hey, to hear, did you feel like you were able to get the same page with Phil and the defenses he was calling, were able to kind of anticipate where he was going, or was it just really new for you? Uh, I think we have a great feel of. Uh, um, of Phil's calls, <laughs> you know, but um, uh, it's it's really a matter of just, uh, you know, when, they, when the teams are going up tempos a few times, you know, they're getting up to the ball and, you know, we're just lollygagging a bit and, you know, really not matching that tempo and, you know, it really falls back on us, you know, and that's really what, it, um, at the end of the day, we just have to execute our stuff that much better. And, you know, as long as we continue to possess that attitude, it really doesn't matter who the opponent is. You know, we just go out there and we play ball, play the rules, you know, play together. I mean, see ball, get ball, you know, shit. You get 11 guys, you know, run into the ball angry and, you know, you swarm tackle. So I think uh, that can definitely get better and it will get better uh, because, you know, the group of guys that we have on this team uh, is going to see to it. To hear, this is Deshaun with Channel 9. I noticed several of you also had names on the back of your helmets for you, Jamel Roberson. What about his story did you want to amplify? For me, you know, it's a historic moment, you know, uh, and it's an uh, unfortunate, you know, you know, case of just the many, you know, police instances going across our, our country. You know, he, sir, you know, a security guard, you know, doing this job and, Unfortunately, he lost his life, you know, being, you know, a hero and apprehending, a, you know, someone that was doing harm. So for me, I wanted to shed light, you know, to a guy like that, you know, like Jamel, who was a hero and wrongfully lost his life for, for no apparent, no reason. And it's just a matter of continue to bring awareness that, you know, uh, people of color, you know, in this country are, you know, being done wrong at a higher rate than, you know, our white counterparts. And we just need, we just want equal treatment. We just want fairness. And that's all we're asking continuously. So um, I think we, you know, it's, we'll do them a disjustice by not continuously honoring their names and, you know, them losing uh, their lives senselessly. Um, and that's just it, you know, continuously bringing awareness. So you know, I think, you know, that's, you know, who I decided to, you know, honor and I'll do so all season and, you know, with his name on the back of my helmet and, you know, on, on my shoulder and going out there and playing. You guys have any more questions for Tahir? Considering that uh, I think 30, 30 players were on this roster a year ago, um, and you have especially had an uh, extensive rebuild on the de defensive side of the ball. Um, uh, what are your thoughts after game one of, of, of game one as a, as a platform going forward for development? Uh, I think, we, you know, with, we have some great young guys, talented guys on this team. I think we have some great veteran guys, talent on this team. And I think we, as, we're going to continue to mesh, you know, and just continue to, you know, just get tighter as the season goes on. You know, you can see in today's game, we had no quit show, continuous fight throughout the whole game and, you know, never turned on one another, pointed any fingers. You know, we just kept lining it up and going out there flying around. So um, I think now that we finally got, you know, the first game out of the way and unfortunately it ended in a loss, but, you know, some good stuff that came out of the game. And I think, you know, it's all up, it's all up from here. You know, we're going to continue to get better. The way we work, there's absolutely no way I see us uh, not getting better. 